Now we can extend the idea of that optimal mechanism design uh, to multiple agents. Uh, in the previous module, we did it for only one agent. So um, if it is BIC and IIR and also maximizes the revenue, then we are going to call that an optimal mechanism in this context. So uh, the, the previous results that we have uh, seen so far, uh, this uh, BIC and IIR actually reduces uh, the fact uh, that uh, all these FIs, the pr uh, probability of getting allocated um, uh, this object are non-decreasing in expectation that we have seen. This is the characterization result. And then also pi i t i has a very specific formula and IIR enforces that this uh, constant of that in, uh, integral formula uh, must be equal to zero. So therefore the expected payment made by this agent i is nothing but this payment multiplied by the GITI. So what's the probability that this uh, uh, ti uh, is taking uh, a value of uh, lowercase ti. So this uh, expression, uh, this expected payment of player i, we are going to sum it over all players and then try to maximize it subject to the conditions like FIs are all non-decreasing in expectation. So we are going to do a very similar exercise like the, uh, the one agent case and uh, to simplify the expression. So we are going to uh, uh, do this uh, substitution of this pi i t i to the integral formula and the steps of this uh, uh, transformation of the, uh, uh, the, the order interchange of the uh, integrals and all these steps are exactly the same. Finally, we get to this point where we replace that first term, which is ti minus 1 over uh, giti by lowercase giti. This is the same term which we are going to call the virtual valuation of player i. So we will be using uh, this term quite often. So this is not the exact valuation because the exact valuation is ti. We are subtracting out something which is uh, dependent on the prior of that type. And that is why we are calling this a virtual valuation. So some, some different sort of valuation. And we are um, trying to maximize that uh, with respect to this, uh, and these two uh, terms, which are uh, having a, uh, we are taking the product and integrating over it. So the first term is the, uh, uh, the probability. So it's own prior over this TI. And the second term is uh, the, uh, uh, the expected allocation of this agent. And we, we know uh, just by expanding this alpha i ti, this is exactly what it means. Now we can uh, take this term and this term together and call that the, the, the whole vector. So it's a joint probability, even though it is a, uh, it can be decomposed into, into the products because all these ti's are independent, but we can uh, use a, a shorthand notation of g of t, which means the, the, uh, the joint probability uh, distribution over this whole type uh, type profile and this FITI is exactly the the, the, uh, the type of, uh, of player I and similarly because this was only with respect to the type so this 0 to BI is nothing but T of I and here the integral was over all T minus I so the integral is over the whole type profile T so this is just a shorthand notation for uh, for multiple integrals so there are in uh, integrals here they are uh, uh, compressed into one so we have the this part which is the uh, the uh, virtual valuation of player i multiplied by the probability of that agent getting allocated and then g of t so now what we see that this is a common term for all the players this and that and this part is essentially dependent for, for that player so we can actually write the total revenue generated by all the players by taking the summation over all these agents. And all that we have is uh, we can uh, interchange because this part, uh, as we said, is independent of any player. So we can uh, shift this, um, uh, this uh, the summation inside and write this to be the, uh, uh, the expression that we were trying to maximize. So sum over the FIs multiplied by WIs and that summed over all the players. So therefore, our optimal mechanism design problem reduces to maximizing this subject to the condition that this FI has to satisfy the condition of NDE. It has to be non-decreasing in expectation. That is, that is what is uh, ensuring that this is BIC. Now, if we just forget about this condition of NDE for FI and we just try to maximize this, we have a, uh, have a summation uh, which we are trying to maximize 
and we, we know that uh, this FITIs uh, will be, uh, so if we take the sum over all i's, that is exactly equal to 1. So we are actually trying to maximize the convex combination of this w i's. So it's a, very, it's a very natural thing and we have seen this uh, uh, very early uh, in this course that it, it is best to give probability of 1 uh, to, to the highest value in this uh, convex sum. So once we are trying to maximize the, uh, the convex uh, combination of uh, multiple uh, numbers, uh, the, the uh, one that we maximize is when we are putting the entire mass on the maximum value. And so and that is the uh, that is the kind of uh, uh, very um, elementary solution to this problem. So we can give this f f i t uh, to be equal to one for that agent whose w i t i value is the maximum and zero otherwise. And if uh, if w i t i is less than zero for all agents, then we do not allocate that object at all. We keep it unsold. But there is a problem with uh, uh, this part alone because now we can actually uh, uh, construct situations uh, under which, based on what, uh, whatever conditions that this WITI satisfies, uh, this FIT might not be non-decreasing in expectation. And uh, therefore, we cannot really uh, solve it in an unconstra unconstrained manner. And if you want to take a look at what is the, uh, what is the example, you can take, take a look at the original paper by Meyerson, the optimum auction design paper. Essentially, the idea is the example is such that the following condition is violated. So remember that even in the, uh, even in the uh, single agent case, we assume some regularity conditions on this W i's. So uh, in that case, the W was, uh, was monotone non-decreasing and uh, this G i's were actually satisfying the condition of monotone hazard rate. Uh, which actually gave rise to the fact that wi was uh, monotone uh, increasing and that was uh, helping us in getting this uh, making this uh, constraint optimization problem into an unconstrained optimization problem so we are going to assume a very similar thing in this context we are going to call this virtual valuation uh, wi to be regular if that uh, condition holds precisely that is uh, you have this wi's uh, satisfying this uh, monotone uh, increasingness condition. So if uh, SI is less than TI, then W of uh, WI of SI should also be less than WI of TI. So if that monotonicity condition is satisfied, then we can actually uh, solve this problem and there is no, uh, uh, no issue with this uh, example one. So uh, this point one that we have made, uh, you can uh, uh, allocate the object to the agent whose virtual valuation is the maximum and uh, keep it unsold if everyone's virtual valuation is negative. And uh, you can notice that uh, the, the condition that we have imposed earlier, the monotone hazard rate condition, if we uh, impose the monotone hazard rate condition for each player, then definitely this WITI is going to be uh, uh, monotone increasing. Uh, but monotone hazard rate uh, for uh, ensuring monotone hazard rate for every agent is much more demanding than the condition uh, of uh, regularity. So essentially, there are examples which can, uh, which you can find in this uh, uh, Meyerson's original paper, uh, which says that uh, if you have monotone hazard rate condition, of course you are going to satisfy regularity, but regularity uh, is weaker. So you can have uh, uh, regular um, uh, virtual valuations uh, which might not satisfy a monotone hazard rate condition. So we are actually imposing a weaker condition in terms of regularity and that is exactly what we need. So suppose uh, we uh, assume that every agent's valuations are regular, virtual valuations are regular, then the allocation rule of the optimal mechanism is the same as the solution of the unconstrained problem. And the proof sketch is very similar, I mean the, uh, the solution is as given in this equation 1, um, uh, what we have discussed before, you give the object to the highest virtual valuation agent and uh, charge him the payment which, uh, uh, which is given by that uh, payment integral formula. And uh, this optimal allocation rule also happens to sa satisfy this uh, uh, non-decreasingness property. So even though we, we are just interested in uh, finding a mechanism, uh, we were just trying to uh, uh, ensure the FIs which were satisfying non-decreasing in expectation, the solution that we got from this optimization problem when we are uh, uh, maximizing the, the revenue earned, it happens to be non-decreasing. 
So uh, not only BIC, this mechanism is going to be DSIC. Um, and that, that exactly is, uh, is the observation that we are going to make. Uh, this is, uh, is non-decreasing and NDE. We'll see in the next module that what implication does it give. Uh, we have actually solved the uh, optimal mechanism design problem uh, for selling one a single object, single indivisible object. And uh, we have found the allocation and the corresponding payment rule according to, according to Meyerson's formula.